Um, when I look out into the night sky in Hong Kong, I see nothing, right? <laughs> um, you just don't see many, many stars in Hong Kong. I got three kids. They were all born here. And sometimes I wish to myself that they could look out and be inspired by a sky full of stars. Uh, that's just wishing, though, and I'm not here to talk about wishing. I've been asked to talk about innovation. But wishes, they sometimes lead to ideas, right? Um, we've heard a lot about this kind of an idea. Fifty years ago, an author and scientist called Isaac Asimov, uh, he was thinking about and wishing for faster, safer transportation, like some of the speakers have been talking about today. And he had an idea 50 years ago. He imagined if in 50 years' time he attended the World's Fair in 2014, he might find cars with robotic brains that you can uh, program a location, they'll go there without the slow reflexes of a driver. Well, that's something, isn't it? Um, a wish and an idea, but it's still just science fiction at that point. Um, really, for something to get anywhere, it has to become an itch. That's when some of our wishes and some of our ideas get together with our feelings and our motivations, and it kind of mutates into something that we've just kind of got to do something about. And there is no innovation until something becomes real, right? Until it actually manifests in the real world and starts to make a difference to people. Uh, Thomas Edison, I think, has all the good quotes on this stuff about the work involved in innovation. Uh, my favorite is, opportunity is missed by most people because it's dressed in overalls and it looks like work. So we've got to put our energy into something. But with that itch and that energy, humans are amazing. We are phenomenal at innovation. Uh, this guy, Mohammed Saidula, he grew up in a part of India that's prone to flooding. And he had an itch for a way to get across a swollen river and proceed into town to get supplies. And so he innovated with the resources he had available to him and created an amphibious bike. Pretty amazing. On very limited resources. Also on very limited resources, you know, in some parts of the world, um, access to energy is difficult. Difficult to have, difficult to afford. So to keep a light bulb going all day to light an indoor space during the day is something you don't want to have to do. But you also don't want to be in darkness inside your home or workplace. I love this innovation. It's just a discarded bottle, water bottle or soda bottle filled with water with some chlorine in there to keep the uh, water from going bad. And then you stick it through a hole in the roof and you seal it so that the rain doesn't get in. And there you have a solar lamp with zero electronic components whatsoever. can last for many, many years. Fantastic innovation with very little resource. That guy, Muhammad, this is called frugal innovation, and it's pioneered by people in developing nations because limited resources force innovations that are not resource intensive, of course. A guy like Muhammad, he's a serial inventor. He's the kind of guy that if I was working at BMW's tech lab, I'd want to have him on my team. He'd bring a lot of creativity, he'd bring a lot of ideas, he'd bring a lot of persistence and passion. And he could help, I think, with a, um, a self-driving car. But flip that on its head and say, what if Muhammad was just with the resources he had to make his amphibious bike trying to create uh, a self-driving car. It would be very difficult. Why? Because something amazing happens when we share an itch. Not, none of us know everything. None of us have all knowledge, despite what we might think about the internet. And none of us have all capabilities or could attain all capabilities. But all of us know some things and all of us are capable of some things, right? And when we combine what we know and what we can do with others, we can go far further. As um, Sir Isaac Newton famously said, if I've seen further, it's because I've stood on the shoulders of giants. Um, each of us, what we know and what we're capable of is in a way the giants that we're standing on top of. And when we get together and we put our shoulders together with each other, we stand ever higher and we can rise up to much higher innovation. I want to tell you about an itch that affected my life and led to some innovations, I believe. Um, a family of four that are now my very good friends, 20 years ago, they sat down, they're having dinner in Hong Kong, in their apartment, and the phone rings, like it does. And they get up and they answer the phone, 
And the lady on the other end is someone they know who's in the north of China in Liaoning province, and she says, the flooding that we've experienced this year is the worst in a century. Two million people have been displaced. Many have lost everything. Winter is coming. It's going to get to minus 20 here. People are going to die if we can't help them. What can we do? Can you guys help? <laughs> well, what a way to pass an itch, right? <laughs> What an itch to pass on to someone. But that family, they did catch that itch. They did start to organize what they knew and what they were capable of. And they were able to uh, gather together 19, I think 17, 19 cartons of, of clothing, of winterized clothing, and arranged to get that sent to the north to China to help. But then it didn't stop there. Other people caught that itch. Other people started providing resources. Soon it was dozens of boxes, then hundreds. That continued to snowball, and it led to an innovation, which was the setting up of a charity, which is the charity I work for, called Crossroads Foundation. Crossroads Foundation is entirely volunteer-run, but now receives container loads of goods from, from traders, from trade shows, like global sources, from manufacturers, from hotels, from companies, from private individuals, and completely volunteer-run, we will process those goods and use them to help equip schools, hospitals, orphanages, training facilities, all kinds of work all around the world, as well as all around Hong Kong social welfare clients. Now, there's an itch spreading leading to a form of innovation. How does it affect me? Well, at about that time, I was living in Australia, where I'm from, and I was uh, working in the IT industry, and I... <laughs> <laughs> I looked different then. <laughs> and um, it happened by chance that the, that family I mentioned visited Australia. Actually, it's where they had hailed from many years before. And I ran into them at an event and got talking to them, and I caught their itch. I thought, you know, I could add my shoulder to this effort. I've got some capabilities. I've got some knowledge. I know some things about IT. I think if I added my shoulders, some of that would move some of what they're doing forward, and we'll get more done together. So I came to Hong Kong. Now, the itch didn't stop there. Uh, one innovation often leads to the next itch. And Crossroads, that was very much the case for us. Uh, we started having a problem. We were getting orders for requests for goods from hundreds, hundreds of orders coming in from charities around the world, about 800 from 90 different uh, charities pouring in. At the same time, we started getting offers of goods from all around the world, not just in Hong Kong. So electronics in Korea or textiles in Bangladesh or furniture in Europe, the list went on. And we thought, it makes no sense to try to do anything from Hong Kong about this, surely in this age of the internet, right? There should be a way for these parties to find each other. Some of those goods could be put to very good use nearer to where they're based. And we found others that shared this itch, and we went ahead, and we innovated and set up a website called Global Hand. Very simple idea, basically just a dating service, a way for companies to find charities that they could work with in placing resources. And so we've had you know, all kinds of things move through that, whether it was uh, nutritional supplements making their way to some of the poorest kids in Kabul in Afghanistan, or thousands of surplus um, uh, mosquito nets going on to battle malaria in Africa, or uh, uniforms for students. Just day before yesterday, hundreds of uh, brand new tablet computers offered by uh, a major technology firm in America, and purely coincidentally, on the same day, uh, a request uh, coming for a nonprofit working in the region wanting tablets to equip their field workers working to create jobs for women in various parts of Asia. So hopefully we can make that match, ha that match happen. The itch didn't stop quite there. We found other people, and this is the point I'm making. When you share the itch with others, more innovation comes to light. Uh, when the East Asian tsunami struck in 2004-2005 with enormous devastation, after that event, it became clear that a lot of people in the corporate sector were finding it really hard to find if the resources they had that they wanted to make available could be made of use to the United Nations and their programs. Meanwhile, the UN, which is a very multifaceted uh, global organization, was finding it very, very difficult to keep the corporate world abreast of what's actually needed and sift out from all the things being, that were being told about what could actually fit their programs and redirect the rest to, uh, to other worthy causes. So when we discovered we shared that itch, they asked us to build 
a platform for them, similar to the one we built, and so we end up with business.un.org, and just last month it was relaunched around the Sustainable Development Goal. Um, women and girls in Darfur for many years have been oppressed, sometimes violently, by the rebels, the Janjaweed. And uh, they say that we're powerless because we're penniless in that situation. Can you help find business people who will invest in our region so that we can start to build a more resilient community? And wonderfully, through that very platform I mentioned, a project uh, to help women and girls who are cultivating the hibiscus flower were able to attract the involvement of the biggest buyers of hibiscus for tea and build a partnership that allowed them to create jobs in more resilient communities. So here we've got an example of connections and itches of a different kind being made through a vehicle that was created by a shared itch in the first place. Um, when I think of all these kind of itches and <laughs> all these ideas and all this knowledge, um, there's a picture that I saw around the time of the, um, the Earth Summit, the Rio Plus 20, that, that really made clear the way that the internet, I mean, the internet in the last, and technology in the last 20 years, has really caused this explosion and acceleration in, in innovation, some of it we've heard about today. It's phenomenal. Because knowledge, ideas, and information are one of the key ingredients to innovation. And when you think about all that interconnectedness, I, this picture really comes to mind. You can see sort of the way that ideas and this, this visualization showing it around topics at that summit. So this is just tweets on an issue. The way that they connect and they can, they can uh, people can find information, they can find shared ideas very rapidly through the internet. But there's a, a, a reason why the internet hasn't just suddenly solved all our issues in the world. There are a couple of reasons. Uh, one of them is that if you think about this is showing between, I think, 92 and 2012. It hasn't been a level playing field in the way that internet access, this is showing on the x-axis education, in fact, and then as the bubbles go up, this is internet access. This is showing different countries over that time. It hasn't been dispersed evenly. The other thing is that so just the very fact of there being information out there on the web doesn't mean that things happen. As I was saying before, it's the itch, it's the, the time when we start to take what we know and the capabilities we have and apply them together to an issue that things happen. And so we have this problem where many of the people in the bottom quadrant of this picture, they're facing some of the biggest challenges of our generation. The kinds of things they're itching for are things like food security, water security, access to medicine, they're more vulnerable to natural and man-made disasters. They're more vulnerable to the ongoing effects of climate change. As we've seen earlier, they have amazing ideas and they know what can and can't work on the ground in many cases, but they are cut off sometimes from an enormous wealth of knowledge and of information and capabilities that are in that upper quadrant. The people in that upper quadrant, many of us, and I think it would be true to say, us in this room, many of us are in that quadrant, we have access to all these resources. We stand on these far uh, greater shoulders in, in, in terms of knowledge access, and yet we just don't really have those itches, do we? We're not faced with those sorts of problems. And if we were, we still lack some of the information that people who face them directly face. So the question becomes, how do you share itches? Well. When our organization turned 10, we kind of forgot. We were busy doing what we do, and we, uh, we didn't remember. And someone said, you guys should do something. We said, okay, let's do something, but instead of just a fundraising dinner or something like that, let's have an event that really gets people connected to what we're trying to do in the world. So we invited some of the leaders of companies that we've been interacting with over the years, and we took their watches and their wallets and their cell phones, and we gave them a pile of builders' rubbish, and we said, build your own dwellings, and for 24 hours we will run activities that try to just give a taste, just a little taste, of what some of the two billion people in our world have to face every day of their lives. Of course, we were very scared doing this. It was a bit of a crazy idea. But at the end of it, the people who did it said, this was enormously powerful. I want to bring my students, I want to bring my teachers, I want to bring my management team to feel a little of what I felt so that we can motivate them to action so that we can start to itch together in working on these things. 
It's a little bit hard to picture, and I was going to show a video, but I might skip the video and, now and just talk about one student that uh, participated in one of our simulations, a girl called Sarabi. She is um, from Hong Kong. She came with a group from her school in preparation for a service trip. They were headed off to Indonesia. They came and did a simulation with us, not a 24-hour one, but a half-day simulation. And uh, she got in touch with us further down the track to let us know where that led her, where that itch that she caught led her. So um, she went on to the trip in Indonesia. And uh, she said to us, when I first came out to do that simulation, I, poverty was just an issue that I had no connection with. It's not something that was a part of my experience. But after doing the simulation, even though it was only short, it gave me a little bit of a feel of what it must be like for people in those situations. And it led me to want to act. Um, in Indonesia, she found herself referring back in her mind to that experience, even as she was trying to identify with the community that she was spending time with there. She went on subsequently to found her own charitable organization after working for Habitat for Humanity. She spent time in Mexico. She uh, now has uh, been doing things uh, with Hong Kong University, drawing together students to participate in a project in Cambodia, providing a school for 60-plus uh, kids there and working with that community on access to education. Just an example of how an itch, like the itch that affected my life, can spread. Now, I said, oh, I'll go to Crossroads and I'll be there for a little bit. That was 15 years ago. <laughs> um, so you've got to watch for the fact that quite often an itch can develop into a chronic rash. Um, <laughs> but in a good way. <laughs> in a good way. Um, you know, we run this, uh, these activities as well at the World Economic Forum. We've had, you know, world leaders come through. Just quickly, this guy um, heads up supply chain for Unilever, and their organization had made this wonderful goal that they wanted to improve the lives of 500,000 of the smallest farmers in their supply chain. A wonderful goal to have. Um, and he saw how spreading an itch using this kind of simulation would be very powerful and so invited us to run it for all the guys out there in the field in his supply chain to get them itching for the same thing. Because if it's just a KPI, if it's just something that we're ticking boxes on, we can't innovate in the same way. The reason it works is because humans have an amazing capacity for empathy. And when we start to take on the situation of another, we can start to think differently about what it is they face, and we can start to itch along with them. I'm itching for something at the moment. I'm out of time, so I won't go into it, but there are a lot of people in our city right here in Hong Kong that still lack access to the resources they need. A lot of those resources are out there, and with the right tools, I think we can make it easy for them to get them, and we can harness a lot of the skill and itch of people in this room to help get that done. If you want to share that itch with me, keep calm. There's going to be an app for that. And it's going to be called Good City HK in closing. When I think of all the ideas, of all the information, of all the capabilities, of all the knowledge out there, in my mind's eye, it's kind of like this huge cloud of dust. To me, the itches are kind of like the gravity that starts to pull those together. And as more people share those itches, that starts to speed up. That starts to generate heat. That starts to generate light. That starts to generate innovation. And those are the kinds of lights that are going to dispel some of the darkness that is still affecting so many of the people in our world today. And when I think about my kids looking out on Hong Kong, I'm itching for them to see that. Mm -hmm.